Welcome to Do Projects. In this video, we are going to explain the project Face Attendance System using Cloud. Introduction The Face Attendance System is a cutting edge solution revolutionizing attendance tracking by employing facial recognition technology bolstered by machine learning and deep learning algorithms. By utilizing these advanced technologies, the system can accurately identify individuals based on their unique facial features, offering a more secure and efficient alternative to traditional methods. Traditional attendance tracking methods like manual entry and swipe cards present several limitations. Manual entry systems are prone to human error, while swipe card systems can be easily manipulated. Both methods require extensive administrative effort for data management and offer limited real-time tracking capabilities. These shortcomings hinder effective attendance management and compromise the integrity of attendance records. So the proposed face attendance system addresses the limitations of traditional methods by automating attendance tracking through facial recognition technology. This technology, driven by machine learning and deep learning algorithms, continuously refines models to improve accuracy across diverse conditions. By integrating cloud storage, the system ensures secure and scalable storage of attendance data while also offering real-time tracking and streamlining administrative tasks through automation. So machine learning and deep learning play a pivotal role in enabling accurate identification of individuals based on facial features, enhancing the reliability and effectiveness of the face attendance system. Additionally, cloud computing provides a flexible and secure platform for storing attendance data, offering accessibility from anywhere with an internet connection. Object of the project. So as I mentioned earlier, the primary objective is to design and implement a sophisticated system leveraging machine learning and deep learning techniques to automate attendance tracking processes. This system aims to reduce reliance on manual efforts and minimize errors commonly associated with traditional attendance recording methods. And through rigorous evaluation and comparison of various machine learning models such as KNN, SVM and CNN, the project seeks to determine the most accurate and reliable approach for facial recognition tasks. This evaluation will be based on metrics including accuracy, precision, recall, and F1 score. And the project aims to implement cutting-edge facial recognition technology to enhance the efficiency and accuracy of attendance tracking processes using OpenCV library. By leveraging advanced algorithms and techniques, the system will be capable of accurately identifying individuals based on their unique facial features, thereby reducing the time and resources required for manual attendance management. And utilizing Drive HQ for cloud computing infrastructure, the project aims to store and manage attendance data efficiently. This ensures seamless deployment across diverse environments, providing easy access to records from anywhere with an internet connection. And to facilitate widespread adoption of the automated attendance tracking system, the project aims to develop a user-friendly interface that is intuitive, accessible, and easy to use for administrators and end users alike. By prioritizing user experience design principles, the system will enhance usability and encourage broader adoption among educational institutions, corporate offices, and other organizations. Requirements needed to execute this project are software requirements, software needed is Anaconda, primary language used is Python, front end framework used is Flask, back end framework used is Jupyter Notebook, database used is SQL Lite 3 and front-end technologies used are HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and Bootstrap 4. Hardware requirements needed are operating system of Windows, processor of i5 and above, RAM of 8 GB and above, and hard disk of 25 GB and above. Now we'll see the working modules of law of work. So the first step is important required packages. Here, essential libraries such as NumPy, Pandas, SKLearn, TensorFlow, Keras, Matplotlib, and OpenCV are imported to facilitate data manipulation, machine learning, deep learning, and visualization tasks within the project. The second step is exploring the dataset. 
In this step, image metadata is structured, allowing efficient organization and access to image data from specified directories, facilitating subsequent data pre-processing steps. The third step is data processing. Here, images are loaded using OpenCV aligned via facial landmarks with open face alignment utility, ensuring uniformity and suitability for subsequent training procedures. The next step is train and test split. In this step, the data set is partitioned into separate training and testing sets to enable robust evaluation of model performance, aiding in preventing overfitting and ensuring generalizability of trained models. The next step is training and building the models. Here, KNN, SVM, and CNN models are trained using pre-processed data to recognize facial features and predict individual identities, leveraging machine learning and deep learning techniques effectively. The next step is performance comparison. So model performance is meticulously evaluated using accuracy, precision, recall, and F1 score metrics, enabling comprehensive comparison to ascertain the most effective model for the given task. And in the next step, a user-friendly interface is developed using Flask, incorporating features for admin authentication through SQLite, enhancing usability and security for system access and management. So administrators are empowered to add users, register their facial features, and manage personalized attendance tracking, fostering adaptability to customization within the system. Leveraging facial recognition technology, the system tracks attendance efficiently, offering a modernized solution that streamlines the process and mitigates the shortcomings of traditional methods, ensuring accuracy and convenience. Now we'll understand about the algorithms used. So first, we'll understand about the OpenCV library. It is a powerful open source library designed for computer vision and image processing tasks. It provides a wide range of functions and algorithms for tasks such as object detection, image segmentation, and feature extraction. In this project, OpenCV is utilized for its robust capabilities in processing facial images, extracting relevant features, and preparing them as input for recognition models like SVM, KNN, and CNN. Its versatility and efficiency make it an ideal choice for handling complex image processing tasks, ensuring accurate and reliable face recognition in real-world scenarios. So the algorithm used is SVM, that is Support Vector Machine. So SVM is a powerful supervised learning algorithm used for classification tasks, including facial recognition. SVM works by finding the optimal hyperplane that best separates different classes of data points in a high dimensional space. It maximizes the margin between classes, effectively reducing the risk of misclassification and improving generalization performance. In this project, SVM is suitable for facial recognition because it can efficiently handle high dimensional feature vectors extracted from facial images making it effective in distinguishing between different individuals based on facial characteristics. The next algorithm built is K-nearest neighbors, that is K-N-N. So it is a straightforward algorithm for classification, including face recognition. It works by finding the closest data points, that is faces, in the feature space and assigns the input face to the class that is most common among its nearest neighbors. KNN is suitable for this project due to its simplicity, computational efficiency, and robustness to noise, making it effective for small to medium-sized datasets and varying facial expressions and lighting conditions. And the next one is convolutional neural networks, that is CNN. So CNNs are specialized deep learning models ideal for processing grid-like data, such as images. They utilize layers of convolutional filters to extract hierarchical features, allowing them to effectively capture patterns and spatial relationships within images. Due to their ability to learn complex representations directly from raw pixel data, CNNs are well suited for tasks like facial recognition, making them a perfect choice for this project. Now we we'll see the comparison graphs. So this is the bar graph comparing accuracy scores of different algorithms. In this graph on x-axis, I have algorithm names and on y-axis, I have accuracy scores. Accuracy measures the overall correctness of predictions, showing the percentage of correctly classified instances. 
This is precision scores comparison graph in this graph and x axis. I have algorithm names and on y axis I have precision scores. Precision measures the accuracy of positive predictions, indicating how many predicted positives were actually correct. This is recall scores comparison graph in this graph and x axis. I have algorithm names and on y axis I have recall scores. Recall measures the ability to identify all relevant instances showing how many actual positives were correctly predicted. And this is F1 scores comparison graph. In this graph on x-axis, I have algorithm names and on y-axis, I have F1 scores. F1 score combines precision and recall into a single metric, balancing accuracy and completeness in predictions. So the algorithm which is best performing in all the performance metrics will be used for classifications. And we can see SVM is doing well in all the performance metrics. Execution of the project. To execute this project, first we need to open the code folder which contains the project source code files. So this is attendance folder in which student details whose attendance has been recorded will be stored. This is images folder in which I have images on which we have trained the models. This is models folder in which I have model files which contain algorithm information. These files will be loaded into the project code during runtime to utilize the trained models. This is static folder. This folder consists of files related to CSS, JavaScript and Bootstrap. This is templates folder. This folder contains all the HTML pages used in the project. It typically includes files like index.html, about.html, etc., which represent different pages of the website. This is app.py file. This .py file contains the information related to front-end logic. It includes code written in Python that handles service and operations such as processing user requests, interacting with the database, and generating dynamic content to be rendered in the HTML templates. And these are Python main code files. This is notebook Jupyter source file, which contains a combination of code, graphs, and outputs all in one place. It allows users to write and execute code in individual cells, making it a popular choice for data science. And this is signup.db file. This file is the database file used to store user information. So now copy the path of the code folder from the address bar of the file explorer. I'm copying it. Open Anaconda prompt. So now use the command cd followed by a space and paste the copied path and hit the enter button. So this command is used to change the current directory to the code folder's path. Now compile the app.py file using the command python space app.py. I'm typing python space app.py and hit the enter button. So this command will execute the python script and perform a runtime check for any syntax errors or logical issues. After running the app.py file, the Flask framework will host the application locally at the default address local host and port unless configured differently. Now copy the local link provided by the framework. I'm copying it and paste it into any web browser. I prefer Chrome. After pasting it, hit the enter button. So the home page of the project has been displayed in the browser. This is the front end built using Flask framework. So here we can see a login link, click on it. So here we have to give our credentials, username and password to login. And if you are new to the system, we have to register ourselves first, click on sign up button, give the details and click on sign up link to register. As I'm already a member, I'm giving my credentials here. And click on login. So it has redirected us to the attendance page. So here administrators can enroll new users or students into the system by providing their username and ID. Additionally, facial recognition is required for identification purposes. So username would be Swati. User ID is 50. Now click on add new user button. So present your face here to the system to learn its features from different angles and expressions. So the system will stop learning after acquiring 50 features automatically. So the system has learned the features. Now we'll take the attendance, click on take attendance link. 
So here we have to show our face again. We can see the application has detected the face. It has drawn a bounding box around the detected face and it has displayed the name, username and the user ID here. So to mark the attendance, click on A button. So we can see the attendance has been marked. We can see serial number, name, ID and time at which attendance has been marked. So here we can view the list of student details who have been marked as present. Similarly, the admin can create any number of new users and conduct attendance using face recognition. So these attendance records are stored in cloud that is Drive HQ. Now we'll open Drive HQ. We have to log in. So Drive HQ serves as the cloud storage platform for storing students' details, including usernames, IDs, date on which they were present, and timestamps of attendance markings. This data is securely stored and accessible from any location with an internet connection, enabling efficient attendance management. Drive HQ ensures reliability and scalability, supporting the project's objective of seamlessly managing attendance records. So this is the file in which the student details whose attendance has been marked is stored. So we can retrieve the data from here. So we can see the name, roll number and the time is stored. So the conclusion here is the project has achieved its objectives, delivering a sophisticated attendance tracking system, leveraging machine learning and deep learning technologies, effectively reducing manual efforts and errors associated with traditional methods. Through rigorous evaluation, the support vector machine algorithm demonstrated superior performance in facial recognition tasks, showcasing its effectiveness and reliability for attendance tracking applications. The project has successfully deployed the SVM algorithm within a Flask framework, facilitating seamless attendance marking. The system ensures accurate identification of individuals, streamlining attendance management processes. And cloud integration has significantly enhanced the project's scalability and accessibility, providing a robust infrastructure for storing and managing attendance data. Leveraging cloud technology ensures seamless deployment across diverse environments, offering easy access to attendance records from anywhere with an internet connection. And educational institutions, corporate offices and organizations are set to benefit from the streamlined attendance tracking system. The project's future scope includes potential expansion into other domains such as security applications and personalized services, further enhancing its value and impact. Thank you for watching video. For more projects please visit our website www.trueprojects.in. For updates on latest project videos, please visit True Projects YouTube channel and subscribe.